Hey friends, Dean McMurray with the Red, White, and You show. Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy Hanukkah to each and every one of you listening to this. This is a special holiday bonus episode that we are dedicating to each and every one of the brave men and women that are currently serving, not only in our communities, but overseas as well, keeping us safe on all levels, right? Um, our friend Susan De Laurentiis um, has kind of partnered with us and where she has provided us not only a trailer clip, what we're going to show you here in a second, but some really great opportunities to connect with some of the very talented um, actors and actresses that are part of the project called Middleton Christmas. This storyline is about a veteran um, and his son that challenges with life, but not only that, the veteran is, is dealing with PTSD and a lot of other complex issues that life has to throw them. Um, so watch this clip. I really think you're going to enjoy it. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Excuse me. Has anybody seen my daughter? No. Miss D'Angelo. Please call me Alana. My son, Max. Hi, Max. Your daughter, does she take after you? In some ways, except when she's digging in her heels. Then I can't help but see my late husband's stubbornness coming through. She's a senior, so she and your son will be in the same grade. I'm really happy that Max will be able to attend your school tuition free. Well, as you know, we're looking for a maintenance person. So this is you. Oh, boy. This is perfect. You took shop? Yes, I took shop. Uh, what's your name, by the way? Max. I'm Sam. Everyone knows who you are. Welcome to Middleton Prep, Mr. Turner. Johnny. Johnny. Hey, man, don't you go to Middleton Prep? It's a new transfer kid. So, wow, a true blue Middleton Prep crusader. What's next for you, man? Harvard, Yale. Maybe take over for his dad, head of maintenance. <laughs> Some people have to work for a living. You want to say that a little louder? You've been promising me you're going to help me put together a routine for the performance, and this, my dear, is your very last chance. Well, you're supposed to be with me. I'm sorry. It's okay. Um, and your role of Johnny. Um, can you take us through that a little bit, the, the Army veteran connection, the maintenance man in, in this latest works? Sure. Um, well, I'll tell you, I, I made two movies with Susan De Laurentiis before this. And uh, when she called me up and she said, Michael, I have a really great project that I'm working on. I'd like to you know, talk to you about it. So we met for lunch and, and she told me about it, that uh, I would be playing... Um, a, a military veteran and I'm suffering, not overwhelmingly suffering uh, from PT at post-traumatic stress disorder, but it's, it's something that I'm living with. And I have a, a son, you know, who's in high school. So, you know, those three things, and I'm a working class guy, I'm ex-military, PTSD, and I'm a single father. You know, those are, a, that's a lot of built in drama and conflict. Right. So right away, the character was like, wow, wow, wow. And what do I do? She says, well, in the story, uh, your wife left. She didn't, right? She, she couldn't deal with, um, you know, the PTSD, the, the child. And, uh, you know, if you're just making, you know, like $35,000 a year, Life is rough, tough, and especially you're living at the edge, but it's not like the cutting edge. It's like you could go under at any moment. 
So, you know, that's, it's very stressful on, uh, on a relationship that probably started too early. Sure. You know, parenting at too young an age and just the worry of survival, you know, that's a lot of stress and anxiety. And then being a, a combat veteran on top of that, I mean, life is hard. Mm. So anyway, I, I thought it was a great character. And she says, you are a, a maintenance guy and you take this job in this private high school because you want your son to graduate from, you know, a, a, an academically acclaimed high school. Um, let me ask you, Michael, um, since our, our, you know, predominantly our, our audience is the military um, and their families, first responders, um, and also veterans. Um, if you could share, you know, one or a few messages with them during, because this, this episode is coming out during the, the holiday season, what would that be? Well, you know, that whole group of first responders and military, you know, without them, we have no country, we have no culture, we have no civilization. You know, um, when you look back at primitive man, they were the ones who protected the tribe, and that's the only way the tribe existed. You know, um, they're so important, and um, their value, you know, you can't measure their value. Like I say, it's like without... Without the police and the military, we have no country. Without borders, we have no country. We, um, we really should celebrate them more. Um, I'm glad, um, thank God for them. And I'm glad they're bringing a lot of them home. Um, I don't wanna get political, but we need them home now. You know, um, Get the heck out of these places that has nothing to do with our security. Sure. Absolutely. So thank you to each and every one of them and God bless you. So with me, I have Natalia Bilbo, um, who played in the latest and greatest of Middleton Christmas. Natalia, welcome to the Red White News Show. Thank you so much for having me, Dean. It's a pleasure. One of your latest projects, um, a Middleton, or Middleton Christmas, where you play Nurse Natalie. Um, mm -hmm. can you share a little bit about, you know, your character and then how it fits into the storyline of Middleton Christmas and kind of your view of, of the, you know, of the movie, um, from your aspect of the world? Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, the movie is absolutely beautiful. It is very heartwarming. I don't want to, you know, do any spoilers for sure, anybody because sure. I really want you guys to, to watch the movie. Um, the trailer by itself is already amazing. Like right. it's already, it already warms your heart. So you can imagine what the film can do for you. Um, as nurse Natalie, I have just a couple of scenes. Uh, it was a, it was a small role, but I was very happy to play it because, uh, I, I come into, into play in a very, um, you know, specific time in the movie, which, which is like a, almost like a, like a shifting point in the movie which right. to me was very right. important because also as an actor when you're coming into a production that's already in full gear right you have to like somehow blend into like the energy that's already been created in the film to have like that same it's like there's almost like it's like yes the language is english obviously but then there's <laughs> another second language which has to do with like the emotional stakes yeah. and state of the movie right so that to me was a challenge especially because i was coming in where in the story there is a big, big uh, shifting moment. So, so that to me was important, and I and I love that my character was, you know, driving the action in that sense that she was, you know, uh, delivering and 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 bringing in some new information that that is right. a turning point in in the movie. So that was a privilege for me to play. As an actress, how do you how do you even convey that emotion? Because, you know, maybe it's, uh, you know. It, when you're playing a role that maybe you haven't played um, in, in actual real life, but how do you convey the emotion of the scene to the viewer so I can feel it and go, oh my God. And, you right. know, so where I can feel the emotion of what Nurse Natalie is experiencing or conveying, you know, how do you do that as an actor or actress? 
Uh, you know, I think ultimately, you know, we're all human. That is the, the common thing that we all have. And we all have emotions and we all experience fear, love, like we all have, you know, feelings are universal. Uh, so I think it's just a matter of, of different circumstances that trigger those emotions. But I think we're all capable of the best and the worst emotions. So it's just a matter of, you know, what, and that's, as an actor, you really have to analyze what are my circumstances, right? right. What are my given, and that's, that's what's going to determine your, your behavior. So to me, it was a matter of trying to understand the stakes of the scene. Um, and I think like, you know, I come from a family of, of doctors and people and nurses who work in the people who work in the medical field. And so I understand this, this dichotomy of, of wanting to be professional and serious, but at the same time, you know, understanding that people go through very difficult emotional moments. So you have to be there for them. Right. So for me, it was the challenge was trying to, to find that balance between being professional as a, as a, as a nurse yeah. and at the same time being empathic and understanding of, of what this human being is going through. Like at the end of the day, yes. it's like, yes, it's a job for them, but ultimately it's, it's like the most human, in a sense, job there might be out there. Like you're literally coming in contact with people who are, you know, in life-threatening situations. Mm. So you mm -hmm. have to put yourself in, in their shoes, you know, um, and try to be there for them, not just as a, as a medical provider, but also like as, a, as an emotional support system. Right, right. Love that. So I guess it's it's understanding. It's, it's having the empathy to, to put yourself right. in that situation. And then obviously I was... Uh, I had amazing uh, scene partners, so that helps. And we're shooting in an actual hospital, so nice. Everything, everything adds layers of, of realism. Military sure. first responders um, and veterans and their families, obviously. Um, if you could share one message or messages with them, um, since this is going to air over the holiday season, mm -hmm. what would that be? Well, first off, thank you. I cannot thank all of you enough for keeping us safe in all of your different jobs. The, the, the sacrifices that, that all of you are making to keep us safe is just like goes beyond anything imaginable. You are, all of you are literally in military and, and medical personnel, first responders are constantly risking their lives to keep people that they most of the times don't even know safe, which to me is it's appalling. The fact that you're willing to risk your life for a stranger that you don't even like put a face to sometimes. Like you think about like military being like, you know, you know, in, in a different country and you're fighting for people back home who don't know. That to me, is like, it's the biggest act of generosity. So I only have words of gratitude to all of you watching this. Thank you so much, especially. Logan Coffey, welcome to the Red White News Show. Well, thank you. After that, welcome. I don't know if I can live up to all that. <laughs> Jeez. Right? When you hear yeah. when you hear your bio come back, right? It's like, Honestly, whoa, I was, who, I was who's that person? Like, I was like, who are you talking about? <laughs> right? Well, you know, um, thanks so much for taking time out of your schedule uh, to uh, to talk about this new pro or this this new project. Now, yeah. I want to, before we dive into it, uh, of course, we're talking about Middleton Christmas. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to give every, because people are like, Dean, what's, what's Middleton Christmas, right? I ask and, you, so kind of a personal question. So do you, deck? so do you typically decorate before Thanksgiving or are you well, decorating well, for Christmas? So afterwards? growing up, my mom was actually a decorator. That's what she, we are, I'm oh. from South Carolina. So she okay. would decorate like homes in the South. Um, so we would all, she would always do ours first. So she would do our Christmas decorating sure. first, she do everyone else. So we got used to it being done like the day after Halloween. So wow. we would go all through November and December and have it. And it always just felt, it felt good. So I've gotten used to that. So I've, as I've moved out and come to LA, I find myself putting it up like earlier and earlier. Uh, speaks, you know, obviously to the military veterans, their families, yeah. and the first responder community. Um, what message would you give to them? Um, you know, giving you the platform, so to speak. What would yeah. you share with them? Um, you know, what message? Thank, would, thank yeah. you first. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Honestly. Um, I, I think Suzanne is another person that's been put in my life for right. a great reason. She's um, had a lot of familiarity with um, vets and helping them out. And yeah. we were able to, do, she does an event every year. And of course this year we're not able to do it with COVID, but um, she does a great gala event every year that gives a lot of money and gets them there. Um, and so it's just great to see vets and just to be reminded that like our, our country, especially after the past couple of weeks that we've had, you know, with the election, and everything like right. our country is, um, 
built on freedom and democracy. And I just, I thank the vets and everyone that's got us here this far. I mean, that's something that I could never imagine in my life and in my, even in my mind to even really understand it completely. So I would just say thank you. And to anyone that is listening, just to tell your story more. I think um, they, we don't hear the stories as much. And I think that's something as time goes on that we need to continue to just thank our vets and tell our stories of, and, and that's more from our grandparents and stuff. But I just remember right. stories, I think, is how they continue on. So um, without Absolutely. that, we kind of won't remember them as much. And right. that's, a, that's sad for me. Right, right. Yeah, well said, well said. Military medium. Today I have with me Christopher Duke. Today, Christopher, welcome to the Red White News Show. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Appreciate, uh, appreciate your time. Well, yeah. let's focus, let's fast forward a little bit in your latest, um, one of your latest projects, Middleton Christmas, which just came out a little while ago. We were talking, alluding to a little bit, uh, the project with Suzanne De Laurentiis production film. Um, and uh, you play the, um, the role of Mr. Masterson, correct? So let's correct. take us through that a little bit. Um, who is Mr. Masterson and how do you uh, plug into the whole story of Middleton Christmas? Yeah, so when they, uh, they approached me, you know, it was kind of funny. They said, hey do you think you could play a dad who's, you know, overprotective of his son? And I said, <laughs> stretch, maybe, you know. <laughs> right. uh, and, and so, uh, you know, people draw on, you know, being a dad. And, and uh, yeah, so in the movie, uh, I play uh, uh, Trevor Steinis, uh, the actor, his dad. And um, I have a, a couple of scenes that, you know, uh, he, uh, without giving too much away, uh, he is asked to do something in the movie, and as a protective dad, I, you know, kind of come in, and there's a, a pretty poignant scene in the doctor's office where I'm letting the doctors know that you're, you know, you're not going to do this to my son, and, uh, and then, of course, at the end of the movie, when, you know, when, when things uh, happen another way, there's another side of, of dad that, that comes out as well, um, and so it was, it, was, it was fun. You know, it was a, certainly a, an honor uh, to, to be a part of it. Um, but I was able to draw, you know, from my actual experiences as a dad and, you know, when, uh, I've had, uh, things that happened with my, my son in real life and, and how I responded to that. Uh, so it was an easy transition to make for this character. Um, he, Mr. Masterson is a little bit more, uh, staunch and sort of, you know, firm than I am. Uh, right. I'm very laid back, uh, <laughs> in real life and, uh, you know, I, I, I'm focused on what I do in my, my, you know, financial and entertainment career, but. Uh, that character was uh, very staunch, very, you know, uh, set in his beliefs. And uh, but it was it was a fun one to play. The show, of course, our 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 audience is primarily those are military um, veterans, of course, first responders. And um, and I'm wondering if you could share one message with that audience, if you could share um, anything with those folks, what would that be during this holiday season? Um, well, I, I'll say first off, I, I come from a, a military family. Uh, uh, grandpa was, uh, in uh, D-Day plus one. He flew, uh, crazy to, to, to say, and, you know, years ago when he told me, you know, he flew the horse gliders and I went, but you flew a plane with no engine. He goes, yeah, the B1s would tow us in and, and, and let us go. And I was like, wow. And you would just glide and, and I remember him telling me, you know, stories when they, when he took the troops in on, on D-Day and, uh, you know, in the B-1, you know, cut the tow rope and go and they had these fields they were supposed to land in. And he had told me that, the, you know, the fields had been flooded because uh, they knew they were coming and they had put in these, uh, these big stakes in the fields to rip apart the planes as they would land. And, and I remember him saying all that and how he got out and uh, he said, he used the term stitching. He said when they had flown in that the gunners were stitching the wings as, you know, as, which were bullets, you know, that were flying up at him. And, you know, I told him back then, I said, you should, you should put this all in a memoir, in a book. And uh, he did before he passed away in uh, 2001. Uh, he and I worked together and uh, he put it in, in a book that I, in fact, I have here in the office today uh, called The G is for Guts, uh, the story of glider pilots in World War II. And uh, I'm really honored to, to have been a part of that. And, and, and what I would say is I use that as a, uh, uh, you know, to, to guiding me to what I'm saying now, which is I have two cousins uh, that are still serving. Uh, one of my uncles was in uh, Vietnam and, and is retired now, of course. 
Uh, but to all of them, uh, I would say thank you. Uh, thank you for allowing me uh, and to all of you out there that are still in the service today, as well as many of my buddies. Uh, you know, thank you for uh, allowing me to, to lead the life that I do. Um, it is because of you that I have the freedoms uh, that I have. Um, there's not a day that goes by that I'm not thankful for that. Uh, especially now at the end of the year when we get into the, you know, the Thanksgiving, the Christmas, you know, time. And I know there's a, a lot of you that, uh, you know, uh, aren't like me and can't be with your family, you know, during this time. And, and just know that uh, it, we're thinking about you, you know, and we are thankful for everything that you do and uh, keeping us safe. And, 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 and really thank you for allowing me to, to lead the life that I lead and have what I have because it's because of you uh, that I have my freedom. And today I have Lynette Tashell with us. You play the character of Chloe. Now, who is Chloe yes. and, and where does she fit into this storyline of, of Middleton Christmas? Man, Middleton Christmas is such an untraditional Christmas story. Um, I think that's why I was drawn to it. Uh, producer Suzanne De Laurentiis uh, was, was over it. I believe Leilani. And then also um, Dale directed. And I've worked with Dale before. So... I knew that, you know, with those kind of powers combined, it would be something special. Right, right. They all bring a lot to the table. Um, but Middleton Christmas is a story that follows, you know, two teens in high school going through what you go through in high school, figuring out where your heart is, you know, whether you want it to be there or not. And then the people who maybe aren't the ones you chose end up being the ones that are for you. Just yeah. following that journey. And then we mix in, you know, things, life happens. And, you know, without giving away too much, there is, you know, a character that's, you know, in the hospital. And that's where I fit into the world. Um, because I am, I, when I first read that I was going to be playing uh, a nurse in a Christmas movie, I was like, we're, <laughs> what's going to happen here? <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, okay, Merry Christmas. But I mean, it, it was... <laughs> It really, I, I understood, I understood uh, the dialogue that they'd like to happen from this piece, just from examining um, the contributions of nurses. And it's, yeah. I mean, it's highlighted now more than ever, like right. the contributions of a staff that's there to, you know, to kind of guide mm -hmm. you and rehabilitate mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. And then just the heart of the kids, you mm -hmm. know, and how giving kids are. You know, and I say kids, but I mean, teenagers are like halfway grown these days. <laughs> <laughs> right. just, yeah. You know, the, the, the heart of, you know, just the, a, a certain purity of not thinking about self first. And that's mm. what the Christmas tie in was for me. Just right. watching um, the devotion between young people, even in uh, circumstances that are not favorable. Right. You know, and, and, and how they come out of it and how they bond and how they grow, you know, and it's wrapped right. in a Christmas bow. And I got to be such a beautiful part of that process, you know, um, right. as as a nurse. And it was just it was it gets me tingles thinking about it, it was really a, a set family. It was really it was really special. And that since one of our listener base is a lot of military or, you know, or families, you know, the 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 first responder community as well. Um, you know, if you had an opportunity to deliver one message to that, to them this holiday season, what would that be? Man, to deliver one message to first responders and military? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh, I feel like, hmm, I just would want them to know that our prayers aren't just there holiday season. And our gratefulness isn't just reflected, you know, when, when the commercials decide to shout it out, right, right. but our prayers are always there. And, you know, we pray over our country and our nation and we're mm. so thankful and there's nothing that we could ever do. There's nothing that we could ever do that would repay the debt <laughs> that we <laughs> owe to these people who are so selfless. And it's not said enough, but it's not that it's not meant. It's not said, but we love you. We thank you, we appreciate you, and we are, and we experience our freedoms because of you. So thank you. Producer, welcome ladies. Thank you so much for having us, Dean. Hi, Dean, it's a pleasure to be here. Absolutely, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. If you could, for the viewers and listeners out there, could you share in your own words 
what Middleton Christmas is all about and maybe a special little Christmas message if you have one for them as well. Well, it's basically a movie about love and patience and hope. Um, it sort of encompasses a wide range of emotions and feelings for the cast as well as the plot. It was also very important to us to promote organ doning as well. And basically, you know, Middleton Christmas, I think, is a great story about, you know, this father and son who come to Middleton and basically end up, you know, bonding with Samantha, who's one of our characters here in the story, and basically end up, you know, creating this wonderful relationship between this father and son and this daughter and mother who you would not expect who would be joining together. And especially, I don't want to give too, weight, or too much away about the story, but there is a beautiful gift that Max ends up giving to Sam uh, towards the end of the story, which really brings the two families together. So it's a beautiful story. And for myself, I can tell you, I am very proud of you know, being part of this whole film. Awesome, awesome. Yes, just a very powerful um, project. And, and one of the things that I love is because you tie... Um, as always, the the veteran aspect to it, right? Um, Johnny being the the veteran, um, working as the maintenance man for the school, and not only dealing with um, you know his teenage son and all the complexities of life, but also dealing with the complexity of re, you know PTSD and that traumatic aspect. If you could share one message, maybe specifically talking to um, those that are listening that maybe are currently serving as first responders or military, whether they're overseas or at home this holiday season, um, what would that message be? I would have to say that we just consider it an honor and a privilege to have such wonderful, brave men and women, as well as frontliners and, and people that are, are dealing with all kinds of emergencies today with COVID, how much they're appreciated by everyone. And we have such a passion and love them all. And it's so important to us to keep them in our prayers. Yeah, and especially during the holidays, you know, right now, you know, my heart really goes out to, you know, all of our veterans and our family members and friends, you know, who, you know, are without them during the holidays. So, you know, definitely want to, you know, give them as much love as possible. Thank you, ladies, for taking time sharing with us uh, about the project. And uh, once again, thank you so much. Uh, we really do appreciate you being on the Red White News Show today. Thank really you, and Merry it. Christmas, and Happy New Year. Yes. Happy Holidays. Happy Holidays to you as well.